In the episode Broke His Crown, Ice King exhibits odd behavior, technically termed flipping out. This is due to Betty, or Magic Woman if we call her by her new identity, inserting a magic AI avatar derived from Betty's memories into the Ice Crown. This AI essentially acts like a virus and alters the programming of the crown, and during this process, it shuts down the Ice Crown's defense system against foreign entities. Basically, it disables the crown's firewall. This allows Princess Bubblegum and Marceline to access the world inside the Ice Crown with virtual reality equipment, which prior to Betty's interference would have been an impossible task. The world inside the Ice Crown is a central town in the middle of a labyrinth. If we recall Simon Petrikov's early video recordings, he has cried, Watch over me until I can find my way out of this labyrinth in my brain and regain my sanity! And hey, the world inside the Ice Crown is an actual labyrinth, so it seems like Simon wasn't just being figurative when he said this. Now whether the labyrinth even has an exit at all, who knows? I'd personally bet that it does not, and the labyrinth structure is merely an artifact of the crown's layout reflecting that of a motherboard. The plants inside the Ice Crown are really interesting from a visual perspective. Perhaps they serve to indicate that the Ice Crown's technology or magic, depending on which perspective you subscribe to, are not just synthetic, but derived from an organic component as well. The most interesting new information about the Ice Crown hands down is that it is inhabited by individuals that have been subject to its influence throughout history. But what are these people exactly? We have to remember that this world is a virtual reality visualization of data, essentially. Not an actual tiny world with real people living in it. A hypothesis I have is that these people might be representations of the actual minds of the original individuals. Perhaps the Ice Crown literally absorbs the mind of the person whose body it has latched onto, and then programs the body's behavior. Hence the flipping out when the motherboards are being altered. The signals the Ice Crown uses to pilot the body are not being sent correctly during these instances. After initially wearing the Ice Crown, a person might be able to influence their body as well for a while to maintain some control, but as they get pushed further back into the labyrinth, they have less and less influence until the point at which basically they have close to no control at all. In this sense, the Ice Crown is basically a parasite that slowly takes control away from its host, but the actions of this parasite stem from a complex wish-granting system which is subject to corruption when the person making the wish isn't completely focused. Betty's AI stated that this wish magic is what she was working on reprogramming. Alternatively, perhaps these are not a representation of the original minds of the individuals, but rather they are representations of duplicates or aspects of these people's minds. The crown might be digitizing and integrating some aspects and memories of the personalities that the past wearers of the crown had. If this is indeed the case, it makes Simon making out with a floating head that's an AI avatar of his girlfriend a bit less awkward, because then this particular Simon would be an AI manifestation, with the real Simon being locked away in Ice King's subconsciousness. Regardless of what the exact scenario is, this is really riveting stuff and I'm eager for more juicy details in the future. Beyond Simon and Gunther, we see two other people in the Crown world, though it's unclear if there might be even more people who merely didn't show themselves in this episode. One of the people we did see, however, was the first Santa Claus! So, we do know the wish function does corrupt easily, but if we recall back in Evergreen, the intended purpose of the crown was for good use. It was to preserve life, even if there was an aspect of self-centered self-preservation in the reason for the crown's creation as well. Perhaps the original Santa here actually was immensely pure of heart and noble in his desires when wearing the crown, and hence he turned into a good crazy guy instead of a troubled crazy guy like the current Ice King. Then again, perhaps he had an insatiable desire to give away all his stuff as gifts, and perhaps being merry nonstop has its troubles as well. Svein, we don't really got much info on him at the moment. Simon described in a video recording how he first purchased the Ice Crown from an old Scandinavian dock worker, but I personally think it's too soon to make any direct connections between this dock worker and Svein. The dock worker could have simply unearthed the crown after Svein passed away, which based on Svein's clothes would be my personal guess. His appearance makes him seem like he lived at least a few hundred years before Simon's time. I want to bring up that we still are slightly unclear on how long a person possessed by the Ice Crown can live. 
Though according to Death himself, you're basically immortal. You're gonna be the Ice King till the sun blows up! As we saw in the episode Finn the Human, somebody under the influence of the Ice Crown can be killed though, so it seems to be an immortality in terms of aging, but not absolute immortality. But let's also remember in this episode, when Ice King died, the Ice Crown mourned his loss and froze the whole world for 400 years. Does this happen every time a wearer dies, or was this event an isolated extreme? Simon had not fully converted into the Ice King back then. Thus, after finally finding a new host, the Ice Crown may have been exceptionally angered because it lost the host so quickly. Maybe the deaths of the previous hosts resulted in far more mild Ice Ages. We have had a recent climatological event called the Little Ice Age, and this lasted into the 19th century. So I'm going to throw the idea out there that perhaps this little ice age started when Spain died. I hope I brought up some interesting hypotheses and ideas. Broca's crown does not provide hard evidence for anything, but it is a fertile source for speculations. And of course we also have to wonder whether the Betty AI will be capable of helping the Simon in the crown, despite her lacking the intensive reprogramming abilities the Magic Betty version of the AI had. Theoretically, the data for the task should still be inside the Betty AI, so maybe she just has to learn how to access it, and it can be put to good use with Simon's aid. And what of the real Magic Betty? What actions will she now perform since her initial plan was thwarted due to its destructive nature? So many questions still left to explore.